Hey, this is Wes McDermott, and in this 3D World Magazine tutorial, we're going to take a look at exporting skin mesh characters from Moto into Unity. So what I have is just this old game character that I've uh, used, and uh, if we take a look and at this, uh, we've got uh, this main control, uh, which is just an empty locator, and I just use this for you know grouping purposes. And if you've um, already read through the actual kind of walkthrough in the magazine, uh, what we're going to talk about is exporting out a cleaned hierarchy from Moto into Unity. Unity. So typically when you export um, in the current versions of Moto, when you export out um, a mesh here or a skin character using FBX, um, you get all these um, transforms and things like that that you don't really need in the scene because we don't really have a um, export selected from this. So um, what I want to show is just kind of my workflow, um, how I work with characters when I'm going with uh, Moto and Unity. And so what we'll do is we'll just go into setup mode here and this will take our character uh, back to his bind pose. and um, like I said before here, we've got this main control, which is just uh, a locator. It's an empty locator uh, that uh, I'm just placing everything underneath. Uh, then I've got a couple groups here. We've got uh, a bind joints group, a control joints group, and then my controls. And so uh, with my setup like this, what I can do is I can just quickly toggle these guys off. So let's just go ahead and just toggle off the controls. We don't really want to work with those right now. And so what I want to show you is just kind of this workflow. And so what we have right off the bat here is, uh, let's just go ahead and enable the control joints. So what I have here is what I refer to as my control joints. So these are the joints that I actually use during the rigging process. And there's a couple things here to note about these guys. Now this guy was built for an iPhone game, so um, there's not a lot of complexity to this guy. But uh, so I don't have like any roll bones or anything like that. But there is one thing. So if I kind of zoom in like on where his leg is, and I'm just going to select this bone, and I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard to focus this. And so I've got this thigh. So one of the ways that Moto works is that I've got this thigh, uh, calf, and then foot bone. And uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of item mode so you don't see this flickering a uh, whole lot here. Let's just uh, go into um, vertex mode. Um, so, like I was saying, we have this um, thigh bone here, uh, calf, foot. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to have like an up vector, which is like a knee control, so that, you know, if I grab this control that's sitting out here in front of the knees, which I'll show you, I'll turn this on here, we've got this little red and blue control here, this um, knee control, so I can actually point the knee. What you need to do is you need to um, take this hierarchy, which is, again, it's our thigh, calf, foot, and this has got an IK chain applied from the thigh to the foot, uh, and you can actually see that guy here again if we turn the controls on we'll, we'll highlight him here so that right there this uh, that's you can see that IK control and so like I said we've got this bone and uh, these guys are in a hierarchy it's got IK applied in order for um, this up vector here to work what well, and you can see that I can point my knee what I have to do is I have to nest this underneath another bone so what we have here here's where the thigh starts and then I have what I typically call my leg root so underneath the leg root is where I start to place like my thigh calf uh, foot and so on and so now we've get this leg root which is another transform that I don't really need that's that's sitting there inside of my unity scene so in this very simple example you can see that you know this this is one transform that you know that I really don't want to need so when I go and create my bind skeleton what I have is a much more simple uh, setup and I don't have any of these extra transforms involved now th again like I said this is a very very simple scene but let's imagine that we had our arm here and that we had some actually roll joints that were inside of here so that helped with some uh, deformation twisting and stuff like that in the forearms and the biceps and stuff so what you can do is have like your bind joints you know, which are bound to the, the very specific joints, like say like your forearm and your bicep, and then you would have, you know, that forearm and bicep if part of the rig is, is, is then also driven through these roll, boin roll joints and or bones uh, and things like that, and you don't really have to have separate bind joints. So again, it kind of, you know, minimizes how many bones your character is going to have. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get through how this setup is going to work. And so what I'll typically do with something like this is, like I said, I'd try to go ahead and just build out my skeleton here. And uh, let's see, where am I? Um, uh, yeah, we're looking at our control joints right now. So what I would do is go ahead and just try to build out this main setup here, this main skeleton. And that's before I do any rigging or anything like that. And then after that's done, I would then just, you know, double click the root. So by double clicking hips, it's going to uh, select everybody here. And I'm just going to right click on this and then I would say duplicate hierarchy. And what that does is it duplicates the hierarchy. So you can see that now I've got this whole other set. Now in this case, what I would have to do since this this is 
done after I've already done an entire rigging process, and I have actually gone through it this way before too, um, is then I would have to then go through and remove things. Like um, if we look here in Moto, you can see that we've got this hips. If I hit click this plus sign, you can see that the hips have a dynamic parent. Uh, here's our leg roots using a directional constraint. If we come down to our spines, got a dynamic dynamic parent. What I'd need to do is go through and remove all of these constraints um, and then I'd also have to do some things like for instance uh, our leg root here if I you know I could go ahead and then take our thigh bone and pull this out of this leg root like this and then um, you know just to get rid of that extra transform and stuff like that. So um, I would have to go through and, and uh, remove all the constraints and, and make this uh, setup very very simple. But as you can see though the the entire setup is um, let's just get rid of all these guys here. So the entire setup is basically those bo those bo uh, joints that I duplicated are sitting right over top of in 3D space uh, the exact position rotation of the actual rig joints. And so I have that here. And let's just go ahead. I'm just going to turn this uh, this eye icon here so you can see this. And now I've got these are what I refer to as my bind joints. So these are going to be the joints that actually bind to the skeleton. And, uh, and one thing here I'll show is we'll just select that thigh and uh, we'll focus that. You can see that it goes, um, whoops, in the wrong button here. Let's just uh, turn off our control joints. Let's grab this guy again. And now so you can see that my thigh, my left and right thigh, are just directly parented underneath the hips. You can see where that was actually pulled out that extra uh, transform hierarchy that I don't need. And so anyways, I'll go through and I'll set all these guys up. And uh, then I'll also do this while well, double click, select everybody, and then I'll come over to my display tab. Uh, and then I'll enable draw options for this, and then I'll set a, a, a custom wireframe and fill color for these guys so that it's just easier to see. And then again, I'll take all these guys and I'll just put them under, I'll just group them. And so now that they're underneath this group called bind joints, I can easily just toggle this on and off when I want to, you know, work with, you know, bind joints versus control joints. And then so once you do that, what you got to do is you got to go through the process of setting everything up. So you got to go through the process of actually setting up the constraints and everything. And it's not hard to do anything, so we'll, we'll go ahead and show this. So here's what I would do is um, I've got my item list over here. What I would do is I'd come up to layout and we'll do windows just to make it easier to select and I'll create like a new window. And um, in here I'll just click this little triangle and I'll come over to data list and I'll select item list and now you can see that I've basically duplicated this. And uh, then I would come down to my main control and maybe on this side we'll start with bind joints. And here's a little tip if you actually hold down shift and left click it will expand everything in your list. Now a lot of times I don't just do that right off the bat because it, it can get kind of you know a lot to sort through so let's just do that here with this thigh though so thigh left I'm just gonna left uh, hold down shift and left click and I'm gonna expand that hierarchy and then what I'll do is the same thing is I'll come up on this now you can see that on this item list the secondary item list here that I can come over to my control joints so I'm uh, in this one here I've got the bind joints expanded uh, excuse me expanded and then this one over here I've got the control joints so we'll come down and we'll do the same thing let's go over to our left leg root hold down shift left click and expand this guy uh, and then this is uh, just what I'll do is I'll go through this process I would just um, select the bind joints uh, and then I would hold down control and just left click on the actual control joint here so now I've got both these guys and then with my uh, let's see modifiers here all I would do is go in and I would just uh, just left click here to add a position constraint uh, and then here let's just go ahead and do it real quick um, show you what it actually looks like so here we are under our bind joints Okay, um, actually the reason why you don't see that here, and this is kind of another tip I was going to show you, um, it's actually moved up here. So um, let's just expand this plus sign. Uh, let me just go through and delete this real quick and I'll show you what I just did there. So here we were on the left, so here they are. Let's just right click and delete these guys. Okay, so now we don't have any constraints there, and I'm going to show you this whole process. So what's really kind of neat about that is whenever you add like a, a constraint to something, and here let's just do it real quick. So here we are, our bind joints. We're just going to select this guy, hold down Control, come over to our other item list here, our second window, and we're going to come over to uh, we've got leg root left. Here's our thigh. Let's just left click on this guy. We're going to add a position 
do the same thing, left click this guy and data rotation. So now he's that's been uh, has a position and rotation constraint added to it. And if we look here in our item list, we've got this little plus. If I click this, you can see that here's where our position item constraint are. And you can see that that's kind of nested into this element. So we've got this little plus sign and there's where we can see those constraints and if we, you know, close that, then it kind of folds up into the item that it's actually holding that's actually has the constraint apply and that's kind of nice in a way that you know it kind of links those guys together but if if you can imagine going through this entire hierarchy like this it, it would be a mess to try to have to go and delete these guys so one thing that I do is uh, and it's kind of cool that you can actually do this is right after um, I set that up I'll uh, grab these two guys like this and then I'll just um, hold down the, just do a left click and drag and drop them right underneath that bind joints group so just place it and you can actually put those into that folder so now when I expand that folder you can see that here's a, a, a really quick way that I can get to all my position rotations constraints like so so the the rest of the process again it is very tedious but that's just uh, you know just something that I'll go through if you look at calf we'll just hold calf underscore L hold down control um, hit calf underscore L here and then position rotation constraint and then you just go through and add that position ro rotation constraint so you're basically doing that for every single bind joint you're constraining it positionally and rotationally to its rig joint and uh, so once that's done you'll have um, you'll be able to then and let's see uh, we've got our here's our control joints so I'm going to disable those guys or basically turn them off. So if you kind of look at our bind joints here, that's what's enabled. I'm going to come over to my controls. I'm just going to enable my controls. Now, the bind joints are, like I said before, they're constrained positionally and rotationally to the rig joints. The rig joints are what are actually constrained and, and, and rigged up to the actual controls. So you've got the controls are driving the rig joints, and the rig joints are driving the bind joints. And so now you can see that if I just simply go ahead and grab hold of one of my controls, like my IK handle, I can actually drag this arm around like this. You can see that it's it's actually working the it's actually manipulating those green bind joints that I have, and you know I can move the entire rig, and everything is following along. And so that is how you can basically transfer all of the animation data later on when we go to bake it. We bake it to this more simple skeleton that's very clean. So now what we'll do is take a look at that process. So I'm going to go ahead and just come out of my setup window here. And i uh, got this guy and he's in this really... Um, very terrible kind of uh, demo run cycle here. So if I start to just kind of move this across, you can see that, you know, I've got this really simple just run animation here, you know, this looping animation. And here in my timeline, you can see I just got a very, just a few keys set um, actually on my controls here. So what I could do during animation is I can just come over here and turn off my bind joints. And now I can just work uh, right with my controls and it's nice and clean uh, in this animation kind of view or state and so now what I would do is I would go through and just kind of animate my character like so and then I would say okay I've animated my character and um, now I'm ready to export this guy over to unity and so what I would do is I just will just turn off the controls and what we'll do is we'll just enable our uh, bind joints so uh, again what we want sorry about that a little bit of a problem there with my mouse. Uh, so what we want to do is be able to just bake all this information down. So we do have some animation going. So here's what we'll do. We'll just um, drop down here our hips, or excuse me, our bind joints, and we can go to our hips. We're just going to double click this guy because uh, we want to select everything in the hierarchy. And then all you do is you come up to animate and then you do bake. And then so what you want is it asks you for your start and end frame. So this is a looping animation. It just goes from 0 to 30. And then you have this option to remove constraints. I usually just leave this off because I just manually delete these things. And I also found that it's not really removing things all the way. So I just leave it off. And then you have the slope type. Do you want it to do auto, linear, or stepped? And so you, you just want to leave this on auto. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit OK. And that's going to bake. So if we come over here now and we look at our timeline here, you can see that we've got keys are in place. So all those bind joints are now have had all of the the um, animation basically baked down onto them so they are actually the bind joints actually have keyframes for every single frame and then what we could do is go ahead and say okay now we're ready to export this guy so um, one of the things like since I want to go ahead and just remove all those constraints uh, it's I 
since I had gone ahead and placed them underneath that group, it's very easy now for me just to hold down, you know, shift, left click, select them all, right click, and say delete, uh, and then delete them all like that. Um, if they're actually inside, uh, so in the article I kind of talked about how they would actually be in here, and one of the tips that I said was you can actually filter your item list. So there's this little button over here, it's F, and if I click that guy, I can actually start to uh, just type in. So if I start to type in position, you can see that what it's doing is finding all these position constraints here that are in here and so that's just kind of a nice little tip there that you can actually filter that so what we've done is we've taken the hips here and we've baked it now we've gone ahead and we've removed all of the um, uh, all of the constraints to those so now what we'll do is we'll just hold down the control joints uh, group and we'll hold down these control as shift left click to select both these guys just right click and we'll delete these guys because we no longer need them anymore and we'll just go through all these menus yes 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 and now we've deleted all that stuff so now what I'll do is I'll take this hip and I'll just drag and drop it right at the root of everything because I don't want this extra little group here which is going to come into Moto as a transform. Um, I don't need the main control anymore. Um, I don't need my texture locators because again it's just going to come in as, an, as another locator that you know, or a transform, uh, a game object with an empty transform I don't need. So let's just right click all these guys and hit delete on this. Um, so here we go. Just going through. Skip, skip, skip. Okay, so now here we go. Now we've got our guy and so in our scene what we'll have is we've got our mesh uh, we'll drop this down. He's got his normalizing folder here, which is basically holding all my skin weights. And then we've got our hierarchy really nice and clean here, and that's all we're going to get. So now what I'll do is I just would then come up and do an export uh, FBX out of this. So the next thing we want to do is let's just pop over to Unity. Okay, so here we are in Unity, and I've gone ahead and just imported in that FBX um, that I exported from Moto. And you can see that here we've got, uh, this is Unity 4, and you can see that that animation that I just did has come into, uh, that's it's been imported in just fine. Uh, we've got a take file that's come over called Moto Anim, and that's the take file that this guy has applied to it right now. And then if we come over here, uh, I want us just to take a quick look at the hierarchy. So as I said before, it comes in, we've got Tater, um, and then here is is just the transform so this now is is all the transform so this is just basically my skeleton and then we have our mesh so we end up getting a, a very clean export out of moto um, it's a it's a good way of working and like I said you know numerous times in the article yes it, it is definitely a lot of work to do uh, but if you're working on a team and you know you've you're trying to just get you know really clean assets over to your your game development guys say if you're just working on the art team or the animation team it, it, it actually does work and it's, it's a good way of just being able to export uh, a very clean uh, file and the other thing that's kind of nice about it is since that you have that extra bind joint you can do things such as you know only create you know certain bind joints that you need that are actually going to properly deform your character so you can actually save out on on adding like roll joints or other types of transforms that that you might need in rigging that you don't really need when it comes to just deforming the mesh so you can uh, save some um, or it's a further way to optimize from there. But again, you just um, export that FBX out at the end, and then you've kind of got this clean file here. So that's the uh, end of this tutorial. Hope you found this very useful. Thank you very much.